Good afternoon, or should I say good evening, from Sacred Space at Titania's Realm. It's 6.01pm 6, on the 24th of January 2024. Just another day in paradise. It's humid this, uh, this evening and afternoon, afternoon, evening. And uh, we've been outside in the garden for a little while because um, I was a bit busy today. I went to my psych and then I went to chase up a rebate at the Medicare office. What a frickin' run around that was. But anyway, we, we got out of there unscathed. Mm. And hopefully that situation will be resolved forthwith. Um, just went round and round in circles and so I started to lose my cool a bit but anyway it's all good it'll get dealt with um, I don't like um, I don't like when someone does me a wonderful favour and we're having to struggle to get that rebate back in through now it's just rude but anyway it is what it is it'll get sorted you just got to deal with the um, bureaucrats who run around in circles doing as little as possible, right? Anyway. Um, oh yes, I just posted a video, I'm currently posting a video of the king parrots that just came to visit the garden. So there's some lovely things that happened today too. And uh, my friend Lynn came to visit me this morning, so that was another lovely thing. And now we're living our best life, about to make another video. So I'll get started on that. Oh, um, my psych told me in our, my debrief today that um, the, the concern with the drug I'm currently trialling for my bladder issues, being a cholinergic, um, he said it puts fibres into your brain. He says, so I worry about you getting Alzheimer's and dementia. I went, oh yeah, me too, but we know how that's gonna end because I won't um I won't be languishing in any old people's homes just saying. So hopefully, you know, my doctor says to me, Well your 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 brain is usually as sharp as a tack, Tanya, but when you get depressed you do lose a bit of cognition. So I just looked at him, I thought, mm, that'd be right. But anyway, I'm not really depressed, I'm just adjusting to new medication and yeah. little bit probably a little bit heightened from it all as I'm kind of a slight altered state like when you go on psych meds is that feeling of um you're just slightly hovering out of your body you know that kind of feeling of unreality but don't worry I'll be whistling my spirit back down grinding her back down into her core forthwith plus tomorrow night on the eve of Australia or Invasion Day, there will be dancing. So I'll be fully grounded in my body then. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, hopefully I feel well enough and I don't feel too, um, too, yeah, hopefully I feel okay tomorrow to dance. I'm sure I'll be fine. Uh, I got through the last few days, so there's no reason why I should you know, deteriorate dramatically unless I get some major side effect, but so far so good. Anyway, I continue on with today's readings, <laughs> and it's entitled Piranhas and Prophetic Feathers Blossoming in My Fibonacci Fractalized Existence. Always blossoming, darlings. Have blossoms, even if they're only silk ones. We'll travel. The flowering of the middle-aged ones. The renaissance. Le joie de vivre of la danse macabre. Whatever. Whatever. So here I post a lovely photo of a feather that was gifted me by some lovely bird. Had lovely turquoise coloured tips of the feather. Were like this pale blue, eggshell blue kind of colour. And then it was grey. It had 
kind of like a goddess shape and a kind of a love heart and then all frayed at the edges where it went to the faded to grey. I guess anyone turning grey is really kind of fraying at the edges anyway. Welcome to my Soylent Grey neighbourhood. Yes, I'm going on about that again. All soulless and empty and grey, darlings. Oh, dear goddess. Anyway, whatever makes them happy. It's just it's ugly for me to look at. That's all I have to say about that. I like to be surrounded by beauty and colour and magnificence because I'm the psychedelic dreamer. 24th of January 2023. And I would like to know, along with rogue malfeasant doctors and scientists, who were the stable geniuses, that should say, geni, that signed off on legislation that legally permitted hospitals to destroy or dispose of patient records after seven years. In particular, the records of women who should have been awarded compensation for their TVT types, which occurred long before COVID was even a thing. So long before, Mine dates back to 30th of October 2007. Oh, this is a trend that is eye-wateringly horrific. Yes, I was sent my evidence of my operation report. I am lucky, not so lucky, a thousands of other female patients whose records disappeared prior to the Shine Lawyers class action, which means they had no case to pursue or any recourse and therefore no claims to compensation. Factor in that I have been whistleblowing against these kind of bureaucratic anomalies for some years now. So it's interesting that my entire file is missing, but that luckily my operation notes were already with Shine Lawyers. So curious minds want to know, when exactly did QE2 Hospital decide to dispose of my file? Was it after I rejected any further colonoscopies last October? Was this an act of pettiness and viciousness because I refused other penetrations of the kind of my body autonomy? or that I chose potential death by bowel cancer rather than put myself through any more of their systemic abuses, plural. <coughs> Even the ED doctor said he could not treat my bladder as there are now no urology reports implying that I am crazy or a liar big mistake to ever do that to me darlings I will go to war on your heads well I now have the operation report in my possession with the serial number of the TVT tape so never ever call me a liar or underestimate me I have sent a copy of that report to both my new GP and my psychiatrist to keep on my patient file meaning the ones that they've kept on me, right? Since the hospital is so irresponsible and dangerous. All this is crazy making, but I am not the crazy one, which is ironic given the state of our world right now. Uh, this was in response to a video. Uh, looks like it was a video or an article called Amnesty and Redemption posted on January 23, 20, uh, 19, 2023, coffeeandcovid.com news. So, hmm. I had a nice day, although it was very hot. I watered the garden and showered a beautiful water dragon who came out to drink. Oh, I remember that 
afternoon. That was lovely. I swear to God, that water dragon smiled. He was like, so relieved to have the water being hosed, you know, sprinkled on him. Because I put it on the, the softer sprinkle thing, you know. He was a happy dragon that day. Then I went with Peter to visit his mother, Elsa. She turned 93 last week. Now it is storming and raining heavily. Yay! But a welcome relief after the intense heat. My garden was struggling. Then I posted a YouTube video, which probably was one of my own ones, you know, going on, probably going on about jewellery or something I'd made. And here I write, I'm going to be gentle with myself today. I just want to show you what I keep looking at. Charlie preening herself in the window. She's a very happy birdie today. I'm going to be gentle with myself today. I worked hard for two days on the freeform Labradorite pendant. I didn't think I could pull it off. It turned out lovely, even if it is a bit amateurish. I am wearing it with pride and delighting in my newfound skills. I am, as usual, worried about money and great spirit is reminding me to just go with the flow, create when I can and to just let everything fall into its natural state of grace. I am exhausted. I was exhausted when I started making the pendant, but a spirit of great innovation helped me push myself through. I almost felt possessed because I would get so frustrated and tired, then would throw myself back into it like a whirling dervish. It's pure magic. I find it amusing and miraculous. But today I must rest or there will be another breakdown or illness. My body can't always keep up with my mind or her will to succeed with her little projects. Come here, come, come, come on, come on. I am blessed. I knew you were going to do it, you little bugger. And spat in my forehead. Not funny. I am happy. I am grateful to have a birdie who shits on me. I am attuned to the multiverses, but not enough to use the forethought to put a cloth over my shoulder because I knew she was going to shit. Someone big is supporting me in my dreams and manifestations, Charlie. Manifestations. I feel their hand on my shoulder guiding me forwards. Sweet, but a tad terrifying. Blessed be the Holy One, the creator of all that is, was, and ever shall be. Amen. For Salah. Hmm. Right, here's a photo of me. Can you see it? <sighs> There's me smiling triumphantly but looking a bit wan. And there's me with the pendant I made nestled right between my boobs. Very nice pendant. Twenty fourth of January two thousand and twenty two. So you're on my right shoulder now. So you're going to poop on my right shoulder, are you? 
You're going to even the level. You're going to even up the level, level the playing field. She's like, whatever, Mama. Don't be so mean to me, Mama. 24th of January, 2022. Ha. My first words were, cup a tea. And this reminds me of my mother, who really was a piranha. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Just tickled my sense of humour. A piranha teapot. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Isn't it? Brilliant. Or as my mother would say in German, Ach du lieber Gott. 24th of January 2021. I woke up this morning from another intense dream. I was standing on a ledge on a tall mountain overlooking a picturesque valley. I don't like where you're hanging your ass, Charlie. I had three people with me. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. I had three people with me. A woman in her 30s standing on my left, her husband who looked dark in colouring, and an older woman I presumed was the woman's mother further along on my right. We were chatting about the view. Suddenly, either a gust of wind or the woman jumped, I'm not sure what happened, but the younger woman leapt out into the void. I screamed and leaned forward, as did her husband and mother. We were helplessly watching her plummet to her death. Time stood still. I went to shield my eyes from the horror, but something said, Don't. Watch. Wait. So I looked again. Suddenly the woman was being carried by some unseen force horizontally and was gliding just below the ledge but perpendicular to the mountain. I gasped. It was gravitationally impossible. Then, while we watched, her body was lifted up in a sort of looping, in a sort of curving loop so that, whoops, sorry, so that she was gently landed back on her feet on the ledge beside us, safe and sound, but understandably in awe and shock. I burst into tears with relief. A miracle, I yelled. Her husband nodded and her mother smiled with relief and gratitude. Then I woke up. Immediately upon awaking, I knew this was a message of some kind. How it pertains to my life, I am not sure. Ow! That's not nice, Charlie. But I immediately thanked God and the angels for their blessings and prayed, as I often do, for a good, healthy, prosperous life surrounded by good, kind, loyal, loving people and my much awaited, vaunted, but ever elusive love partner. Oh, I was barely finishing my barely synaptic thought processes and prayers, which felt extremely powerful given the context of waking up from that astonishing dream when Nigel in New Zealand messaged me. I answered immediately. He had been worrying about me. We had a lovely long chat. I feel much loved and cared for. My angels are recalibrating my mind after the recent trauma with that doctor, meaning that horrible skin doctor that was so creepy. Not the one I see now currently, you know, in the last couple of years, but the creepy one before that. Oh dear goddess.
Anyway, all is well. I had lots of rest yesterday after my epic dancing. So feel much better today. Albeit it is very hot today. Humid, icky and sticky. Icky and sticky, Charlie. She goes, I know, right? Psychedelic dreamer has her dreams and her reality. Slipping in and out of paradigms like a queen, as I have always done. Hmm. I feel like I am being prepared by great spirit for some new unexpected enterprise or mission. I have no conceptual idea what that might be, but I feel spirit wants me to be in service of some kind. So I pray it is no more traumatizing, life-threatening vileness like I was cast into by the gods in previous years. I am too old and too tired for dealing with dangerous psychopaths. I need a good, happy, peaceful life. But my angels have their own agenda and I sense they think I am ready. Will I fly? Will they help glide? Will they help me glide through the desolation and horror and heal me enough to cope? I don't know. This is... This is a mission of trust. I have very little trust in most humans now, but I can totally trust in my angels. The few rare and precious earth angels in both human and animal or bird form, even if they do poop down my neck, and in my higher mind. What do you think of that, Charlie? Higher mind. Do you have a higher mind too? I think you do, Charlie. Where do you go when you're dreaming, Charlie? Do you go where Mama goes when your dreams? I have always underestimated my own power, spirit and intelligence. I have survived so much and when this body eventually turns to dust, I know my spirit will survive even this incarnation of the Tanya. So what is all this intrepid little breast-beating Mishigas about but just a whisper on the wind? Ego, integrity, survival. I am so attached to my body now, even though most of the time it has served me at the merest calibration due to chronic ill health and CPTSD. It has kept me alive against all odds, in spite of shitty doctors and stranglers and rapists. In spite of my sadistic family of origin, in spite of dis-ease and malaise and solipsistic desolation. Like a leaf on an updraft, the woman in the dream was blown back to safety and if she can do it spiritually, then so can I. I got to thinking about my dream this morning. The way the woman fell downwards, then rose up to be floated horizontally and then lifted above the ledge we were standing on and landing upright on her feet as gracefully as a leaf buffeted on a breeze. It feels symbolic, like perhaps a musical conductor's motion. It feels important somehow. 
I don't recognize any alchemical symbol. Hmm, the truth will out. And I drew a little drawing of the directions of the, uh, the movement. <clears throat> so you've got the, um, the up. You've got the up down where she fell off the cliff, falling down, and then rising up, and then moving outwards, perpendicular, and then doing the loop back and landing on. Charlie just knocked us off our perch. Thanks, Charlie. Back over, loop the loop, and back down on stable ground beside us in the dream, right? Which is nonsensical, and I do realise it's a dream, but it was the motion of going like this. Up, down, down, up, out, loop, down. So, hmm. It occurred to me this morning when I was perusing this, when I was thinking about doing a video earlier this morning. It's sort of the motion you make when you're holding the crucible handle. You just go backwards and forwards, backwards, forwards. You've got the flame on the silver. And then you give a little kind of a loop to flip the silver inside the crucible around. And it's similar, but I don't think that's exactly it. But I wondered if that maybe that motion of going and then knocking it up and down was what Spirit was trying to show me that I'd be working with casting silver. But I, I guess I'm extrapolating a bit too much because it's not exactly the same motion. But it's interesting. Got me thinking. But sometimes my spirits send me messages and dreams and it's um, symbolic like that and it doesn't make sense at the time but then later on it sort of manifests and I'm like oh that's what they were trying to explain to me so anyway 24th of January 2020 I'm decoupaging an old school case and came across this card Lynn Robertson gave me as a Christmas card in 1979. I was 14, she was 18. I love my creative wild friends. Even though we are no longer in contact after so many years apart, me living in Brisbane for the past 31 years, and I'm grateful we are in contact again, but it's a bit sporadic contact, but I was planning to visit her next month in February but I didn't get enough money together so it'll have to happen when I get my small settlement might try and go home then and I don't know when that's going to be arising they, they said next year which is this year but they didn't specify which part of the year or which month and date of the year so I'm waiting in limbo land for money as I always am what, so what else is new but it's a bit frustrating when you know there's, you know, a little bit coming and it'll be enough for a little trip home. So, I'm a bit pissed off people, but it is what it is. It'll happen when it happens. Anyway, continue. I think I will paste this on my case. I could never part with it as it was such a sentimental thing. <laughs> I, I love, I, I loved Lynn so much growing up. We were like, we we were not we were not related by blood, but we were like, you know, sisters running up and down the beach together, running wild, and I used to have lots of sleepovers at her home. And her mother was a wonderful second mother to me. In fact, a better mother to me than my own mother was. So there is that. So that's where our bond is. That we um we grew up together virtually, although Lynn is older than me. She had to put up with me being an annoying bratty kid for a while. Just to get on her nerves a bit. But um that's the beautiful card she bought me of a dragon on a tree. And she wrote a beautiful poem to match the um match the uh, the image of the card. So uh, I think I did keep the poem somewhere.
Oh, here it is, written out. Because I'm a pack rat, what they call in America a pack rat. I'm a hoarder. I used to keep everything. I was very, very, up until recent years, I was extremely sentimental. In the last few years, I've burnt a lot of stuff because I thought, what's the point of keeping all this stuff of people I don't even remember anymore and or people that were so awful that I don't want to remember them anymore. So there was that. So I did a lot of burning, burning off of things, but there's still a few little treasured memories, and this is one of them that I, I did keep. The card itself is glued into a case now, but that's why I took a photo of the the writing on the inside of the card so we could preserve the memory of it, right? So I'll read it to you in case you couldn't quite make out the writing and my terrible quick um, view of it. To Tanya. <laughs> this is so typical of Lynn too. I didn't like the usual crappy Christmas cards, so I got you this one instead. When I looked at the eye of that dragon, it reminded me of Sheriff's Eye. Nasty, suspicious and adorable. Sheriff was their cat. Happy Christmas. Best wishes. Love from Lynn. Pardon me. <clears throat> Here's a poem I wrote for the card. A dragon crouched in a tree, looking nasty and suspiciously at me. I said to it, are you feeling happy? And hello. But its answer was an angry hissed, no. So I walked away and left that dragon curled nastily up around that tree, still hissing and glaring suspiciously after me. That's all I can think of to write. So I was 14, she was 18. I thought that was delightful. Love you always, Lynn Robertson. Always and forever. Um... Here's a card that my mother had decorated up for me. She writes in her crazy handwriting. There will be sparkles in your life again. Look at all the fish in the sea. Be my happy girl again, please. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you when, it, when I read it out to you. But there's the card and it was of um, mermaids which my mother and I, my family, are very fond of mermaids. In German, they're called Lorelei, and um, they're supposed to reside in the river Elba and also in the Danube. But yeah, that's, um, that's our attachment to mermaids from my German mother's um, cultural motif. Um, a birthday card my mother embellished with beads and rhinestones. I was suffering severe depression at the time. It must have been when I was living in her house in 1996 when I almost suicided. It was one of the few tender moments with my mother. She had no idea that she was often the cause of my suffering as she lacked insight into her narcopathy. But yes, at 54, now almost 59, I am striving to sparkle again. As for the fish in the sea, just keep swimming. My happiness is not contingent on a man. If it had been, I would never have survived that last suicide attempt in 2015, or the macabre shadow Muppet display at drumming circles last year that the gods sent me to after the near-death experience with that foul, befouled surgery. I wonder what the point of all that really was. A strange man standing behind me with bunches of wooden roses he was selling, 
claiming he knew me. Dave looking on in amazement. The varying shades of pink of the roses offset above my purple top hat. Me sitting on the ground minding my own business but immediately going into warrior mode when the man called out. She knows I am here. Just wondering who that car is sitting out there. But not my monkey, not my circus. Me replying without looking behind me. Yes, I do. My nerve endings sensed the energy of someone behind me, even though I had not been conscious of his arrival. I saw the glimmer of concern in Dave's eyes across from me. Yes, my angels have a bizarre sense of humour. I will give them that, winky face. Still, after all I have been through in life, the good, the bad and the ugly, I know one thing. I am loved by beings of light and some fabulous friends. It was a great comfort to me to know that. 24th of January, 2019. 6.37 p.m. Today was another scathing hot bastard. I snoozed through the middle of the day, then forced myself to go down to Woolies. Awkward, as my former treacherous friend was on shift. I just carried on getting my few groceries and checked out. Braced for her to start something, as she already had the nerve to badmouth me to my daughter recently. But she didn't try anything. Good. Sick of callow, false, awful people. Heart sick to my core. But you know, out of awfulness, awfulness, something strong and beautiful always blossoms. You just have to cut out the dead, rotten wood and allow new paradigms to unfold. I'm just suddenly having a really hot flush. The air conditioning's on and I'm boiling. I'm on fire, man. It's like, whew. Wow. I suppose I'm adjusting to a new medication. I'll have to be patient with myself. Yes, seen it many, many times. Let negative, cruel, vapid people go and carry on my journey to wholeness. Maybe someday I will attract better, more decent people, or not. I am quite content to walk my path alone, nurtured and protected by the very few precious souls who love me and strive to keep me going. And you know who you are. Twenty fourth of January, two thousand and eighteen. I am delighted to see I have survived long decades of abuse to witness the dawning of the Aquarian Age, the downfall of the patriarchy, and the rec rec recognition, rebirthing of the divine feminine. This was before our current epoch blew out of control. A cultural shift which embraces the raising of human consciousness via healthy pursuits, i.e. yoga, meditation, mindfulness, and the exploration into ancient knowledge and the healing power of plants which co-create the abundant life on this planet. It's like finding old favourite slippers and sliding them on again to find out they still fit perfectly and are as comfortable and comforting as ever. 
The world is waking up and rubbing her eyes and looking again at integrating ancient law and healing our modernist, dying, traumatised, starved world. Her spirit moves among us and one by one we are finding ourselves switched on to enlightenment. With that we shall co-create a better, safer, kinder planet for all that lives upon her. I hope I live long enough to see the abundant bliss and good health and harmonic resonance for my descendants to enjoy. It is our birthright and I will have no descendants now. But I guess others, other members of the family have managed to have grandchildren, so we'll just have to look to their future instead. Watched Sensitive, the untold story about highly sensitive persons. Powerful stuff. Can't sleep, annoying, so gonna lie here and listen to the much desired rain. 24th of January 2017. Someone has hit the front of my car, probably with a shopping trolley. Nasty. I don't even know when it happened, as today is the first time I've driven to the shops in days. I don't think it happened today. I only just saw the split in the plastic front bumper when I came back to the car just now. Who damages someone's car like that? Bastards. I can't afford excess insurance. I did not even do the damage. Oh well, the Tanya curse continues. Reading I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou, wonderful woman. Sitting outside in the shade of the big umbrella, I cleaned the filter in the fish ponds. The sound of water tinkling is soothing my nerves. I am tempted to drive to Wynnum Beach later, take Beauregard for a long walk along the Esplanade. Maybe when it cools down and peak traffic is over. The birds are busy chirping out their afternoon chorus. The house is quiet in its solitude. The sky is blue and cloudless. I am going to be okay, again, just for today. The headache still gently licking around the edges of my skull, not fully developed, just a vague threat. Four days now, but this is more just a pressure. I took Panadine last night, but only one as the headache wasn't too painful. Hopefully in a few days I'll be back in better health. And there's a, a better photo of that little feather I found. Trigger warning to go and make a cup of tea or switch me off, darlings, if you're in a dark space. Child sexual abuse, death. Utterly exhausted, disappointed, trying not to be bitter about the way I am constantly sold down the river by abusers and those who align with them. I have been thinking deeply about my life. Why are you licking the windows, Charlie? That's just cray cray. So I have been thinking deeply about my life and its true meaning. I have realised how often I have gone into fight for other survivors and how very often I was just used and cast aside like trash. Maybe I am trash after all. But you know, 
I am proud of who I am. I stand up for myself and others, even if it has been rare that anyone has stood up for me. My profile picture is a feather I found recently. Inside its pattern, there is a love heart, hearts full of life, believing in their own existence, fiercely pounding, even in the light of reality, that we are not wanted, soiled and despoiled. Vulnerable and gentle, my heart yearns. Fierce and proud, my heart soars. Lonely and outcast, my heart breaks. But it won't die. Not yet. Hearts are amazing organs. I sat at the deathbed of my stepfather, another paedophile who caused me deep shame and even deeper rage as a child, but a man who after 23 years somehow earned a measure of my love and respect. How? I don't know. Perhaps a show of concern when I first cut ties to my malevolent mother and he snuck around behind her back to visit me, bearing a Google hoop cake. That Google hoop cakes they, he would have bought in a cafe called Tanya's, which was near where they lived in Wellington Point. It's kind of ironic, a cake from Tanya's to be brought to the Tanya, right? Sweet in a way. Knowing I had no family, and no support and was half out of my mind after my separation from being attacked and strangled and striving to move forward and get my life, my safety and my tiny traumatised family, my kids and I, back on track. So as he lay dying, calling out my name in a garbled voice that I had not recognised, it was my mother who yelled at me. He is calling your name, Tanya. Hold his hand. I looked at Jared, my hero, who supported me to support this dying man who had barely stepped up to take the role of father. He nodded. I took Case's hand, the emaciated hand of a former concentration camp survivor, now sucked of flesh and life force for the second and final time in his life, and watched for the remaining hours as he fought hard, still trying to avoid the threshold between life and death. I watched as his heart a narcissistic heart that had soothed only his needs and his sexuality kept beating. A heart that had needed medication for many years but still outlived him by several minutes after the machines were switched off and the mainline morphine was stymied. He is dead, proclaimed the male nurse. He does not need morphine now. I yelled, no, no, his heart is still beating, his body still functioning. Keep the morphine going until the last beat of his heart. They humoured me. So I know something about hearts. They are strong motherfuckers. They really are. They can outlive even your own brain and mind. Well, my mind was fucked from early infancy. After all, according to another of my abusers, Angela, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. In recent years, since my liberation from the evil, perverted, greedy, 
narcopathic family of origin. I put my heart and mind and soul into dancing, spending my time with other battlers, warriors, homeless, and invariably came across yet more callow, shallow, heartless people. I know their stink so well. I embraced them, fought fiercely for them, raised them on high, glorified them to no avail. Might as well be chicken little with the sky with the falling sky crying, Are you my mother, sister, father, abuser? On wings of hate they writhe and float, stealing from my strength and selling me down to the bone cracking, side splitting vultures. Fly my pretties. Fly. So instead I fight some more. Fight and fly and dance and cast a spell of furious righteousness. I who defend other survivors, who defend and protect myself, am scapegoated and demonised. But that is okay. These people will never comprehend my intentions or my advocacy. Cowards and bullies flock together. A rare phoenix bird must die a thousand times in her own flames, garbed in her own blood, sweat and tears, facing her own fears and crack her own golden egg that feeds the souls of her own broken-hearted ones. She stands alone, looks around, ruffles her feathered cloak, drops it to the ground. Hearts will fly, hearts will fall, but no one will ever catch me. Naked I stand on my own two feet, desolate and impoverished, mocked and derided. My light shines even if you will not see it. Humans have hated and betrayed me for decades, but there are still a few who do love me, who make my life worth fighting for, whom I am proud to know and love. Aqua flames extend from the heart of this feather. My life has worth, my womanhood has merit. I will keep fighting for myself and others, even as they piss like golden showers on everything I ever did or am yet to do, to survive and thrive, to inspire, to conspire, to believe, to be and to see. In the land of give no fucks that sells women like me to oblivion, I am the voice that you drowned, the silent scream of the aleph. I am not afraid of whom I am, not anymore. The cult of death and perversion that voted in Trump will not win out over me. I have already walked in its shadowy valleys and climbed out and looked across the desert of desire and desecration. I have unwillingly and unwittingly whetted the appetite of pedophiles and abusers. I have whelped the hounds of hell and birthed babies, both living and stillborn, my own and others, into this world. 
I have mopped the tears of dying men, predators in my own personal life, fought and cared for my own mother, whose destruction to my life reverberates still and probably will until the day I die, even though I forgave and released her. I have lost home and or family and any hope of a loving partnership due to trauma and a warrior spirit too wary and weary to let any callow, low-life bastard ever hurt me again. Then in rampant lovesick denial even gave that false illusion of connection a whirl and a twirl again and lost again and again. But the dying predators called my name and the ghost of a former lover slammed his feet on my front steps and his fists on my door because my light and my love could not be diminished by them. In death, they knew it, perhaps in life too. Regrets, I have none, but perhaps they had a few. Still they come to feed or seed, but in God's speed, I spurned them to their small corner in hell. If hell exists, for I have lived it, had it lick my face and laugh. She who laughs last, laughs best. That nearly killed him, for oh, how he hated my laughter, my joy, my fight. Amazing. The laughter of a woman in love made him hate. Another suitor once told me to get off my cross. <laughs> that was Steph. How I abhor that filthy, pedophile religion. Crosses, instruments of torture, suffering of little children to come, spelt C-U-M, unto ye. We won't come, C-U-M. We are innocents. We take our purity and we stash it down where we keep our rage. And when it finally explodes out of us, it is majestic, beautiful and fierce. That suitor wanted me to grovel back to the venue that betrayed and abused me, to that group of people that witnessed me being assaulted on several occasions, but instead of defending me, scapegoated me. Evil fuckers. Then bored with no one to torture, they begged me to come back. Morons. Still, some of those people trawl after me at the casino. Obsessed much? I shrug and turn away. I owe them nothing. In fact, I fought for them, protected and defended, gave my heart and mind and soul. As all wise women do, Guide and teach. Come here, Charlie. Heal, not harm, but fight to the death if we must. Lol. Latanya, turning shit to spiritual gold since 1971, which was when the sexual abuse started when I was six years old. Fruit bats, 
flapping in my strawberry guava tree. What a racket. Bit scary hearing their, le hearing their leathery wings too. God bless them. Still not as creepy as Donald Trump, who I really still think is creepy even to this day, darlings. 24th of January, 2016. In reference to recent news between God and myself on behalf of another survivor, his will is done. The smiting has taken place. It is forbidden for me to take pleasure in it, and I wish to the heavens above and the hells below that my angels would bless me instead of cursing me with so much sorrows I can barely hold on any more. Sorrows, worries and stresses and stressors and upsets. But thank, thank you, God, and your angels. I swore an oath to pray for the redemption and natural justice for another. And I see that the Lord has heard and has delivered. This gives me hope. Oh, Charlie, settle. This gives me hope that one day I may also merit the abundance, happiness, true love and good health that was stolen from me but i am satisfied that my prayers for angelic assistance have been born on high not for myself can i ask to prosper but i can take pride when evildoers are finally smited whether literally or figuratively enough is enough a clean slate for all involved a new broom to sweep out the drack. Drack means filth or dirt. May the Lord bless us and keep us, and may his light shine upon us and bless us and all humanity and birdies. With peace, shalom, amen v'sala. 4.45 a.m. What a night. We had a blast. It will take me four days to recover. 4.18 a.m. Oh my God, awesome night, even if I still have to walk to the car in the pissing rain. 24th of January, 2015. 6.47 p.m. Slept from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. My throat's really dry, I need a drink. <clears throat> then went to Crystal's. Helped to move, I have to worry because uh, one of the side effects of um, mirror Begron is um, swelling of the airways and your throat closing up. So I'm sort of starting to panic a bit, but I'm sure it's just, I've just got a dry throat. So I won't panic yet. Um, where was I? Sat from 7am to 4pm, then went to Crystal's. Helped to move the rabbit cage and set up. We moved the tarps. Much better now. Hopefully the rainwater won't pool on the tarps. Lovely peaceful evening at Mitchelton. We are now sitting in the bunny enclosure, chilling with our homies. 5.53 a.m. Have had a hot Epsom salt bath, washed my hair and am now chatting on Power Talk and sipping on a nice hot cup of tea. I had a wonderful time last night dancing with my gorgeous friends. Very happy, lucky woman here. Even if I can't feel my feet. 24th of January, 2012. What shall mummy wear dancing tomorrow night, Charlie? What shall she wear? Shall I put on all my makeup? 
and my glitter eyeshadow and my pink eyeshadow and my purple eyeshadow and my eyeliner shall i and i have my flower in my hair or shall i put the beads in my hair like i did last week mama looked lovely last week i don't know what to wear Uh, where was I? 24th January 2012. I got a wonderful surprise from Margaret today. Margaret's my childhood friend that I met when we first migrated to Melbourne, Australia when I was nine years old. She posted me the beautiful Croatian embroidered blouse she bought for me recently in Zagreb and some amazing chocolate with popping candy inside that really did pop and sizzle in the mouth. Wow, it was delicious, Charlie. The chocolate came from a factory near where she was staying in Zagreb. Lucky I wasn't there. I would have eaten myself stupid, lol. I would have, wouldn't I, Charlie? Mummy loves chocolate. And I've been poopy kind on. Oh, well, I don't care. I'm going to get into my nighty after I finish this reading, so it doesn't matter. Rainy, pouring, blah, blah, miserable day, but I managed to remain dry and serene in the face of the next onslaught of flooding. Poor Brisbane is copping a beating again. 24th of January, 2011. Handy woman and cook. Just move my hair out the way. I spent the day, so she goes to poop in my hair. You an evil birdie sometimes. I, she really is. I spent the day rearranging my possum proof fencing with the new taller stakes. Now need more bird netting as the old one doesn't cover the area. Then I repaired my fence line on the right of my place as it's all rusted and hanging loose. It was quite an effort because I ran out of wire to tie it all together so I had to cut up old wire coat hangers so I could complete the task. Phew! Then I went inside for a much needed shower after working in the heat and then I cooked an amazing dinner for myself and Crystal who came to visit. Crystal was mightily impressed as the stir fry was delicious. I fluked it, but she thinks I just lie about not being able to cook and hold back from actual cooking, lol. <laughs> I also cooked up roast veggies, and for dessert we had poffitures, which Crystal loves so much she inhaled, and poffitures are like little puffy, little tiny Dutch pancakes. They kind of puff up a bit, which is why they're called poffitures. She had a go at making the next batch so I could have a bit of a fress myself. Lol. All in all, a really good day. But I still have so much housework to do and the water pressure spraying is still on my to-do list. Oi, that was until Lucy stole it from me. So I no longer have a water pressure spraying thingy, do I? Ah, oh, dear goddess. This is what happens when you have friends on methadone. But anyway, life goes on, people. And uh, it's a beautiful sky out here. I'll just show you the beautiful sky. It's got a, like, kind of a golden hue. Sun's already set. And it's a beautiful night. So on that note, say goodbye to the people, Charlie. She says, I've turned my mummy into a pro heart art piece. If I can get all the poopykins to join together, my mummy will look like she's been spray painted with yellow shirt. There we go, there's another one. Cheers, thanks a lot, Charlie. The joys of owning a bird, well, in particular, 
a rainbow lorikeet because they're messy poopykin birds. Aren't you little Charlie? I got your tail. I got your tail. What are you going to do? She goes, no touches my tail. All right, Charlie. You was the boss, Charlie. Say goodbye to the people, Charlie. Say goodbye to the people. Say hello, goodbye, I love you. Say good night. Say bye, Tov. She needs to go to bed. She's looking a bit. She's looking a bit addled in the brain too. Sunset, birdie num num type. Okay, on that note, have a beautiful day, night, afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are in the space time continuum. And as usual, may you be blessed by the gods of your understanding and all the birdies in the neighbourhood, but not blessed quite as much as I have been this evening. And um, yeah, stay true, stay in love with our planet Earth, stay in love with each other, be kind to each other, and remember, never ever let the bastards grind you down. Bye for now.